Today's video is brought to you by StoryboardThat.com. Please visit TeacherCast.net slash StoryboardThat for a limited time offer. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 55 of the Tech Educator Podcast. Happy, happy June 1st. My name is Jeff Bradbury from TeacherCast.net. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a great show for you. Tonight, we are talking all about Star Wars, Star Wars in the classroom, and how you can bring a little Sith into your students' lives. We have a great panel and a great set of co-hosts tonight. I want to bring on to the show the one, the only, the Waka Patui and Sam Patterson. Sam how are things going out there, and uh, what's going on in the wonderful world of Waka? Well, the wonderful world of Waka is really an amazing place today because he's been working on his website all day. It's amazing. Well, it's only amazing because you have no hands and you're building a website. I, I noticed that your background has changed. Uh, are you keeping up with the Star Wars theme, Sam? Have you turned to the dark side? Yes, yes. Well, it's not so much a turn as a pivot, but, you know, less light side, more dark side kind of a dark gray if you will and, and what are you doing to create that effect uh there's a big black sheep there's a sheep sheet with a t got it got it so uh, you said that you were creating a website uh talk to us a little bit about what you're doing and where we can find said website well the website is still really under construction but it's at edupuppets.com and it's a WordPress site, so I'm stepping out of my. There it is. It's beautiful, not really at all. Hey, that it's it's my first WordPress site. Yes, and you're doing a great job with it. You can see my face. You uh, have marshmallows in your mouth. Yeah, he likes marshmallows. We need to get you a better graphic for that. Uh, okay, we'll work on it. I can I have some more marshmallows? Well, you got to get you a better graphic for that. But it, it's really nice that you're doing that over at Edu Puppets. I know that you're putting this together because of a certain blog post that's coming out soon from ISTE. Uh, tell us a little bit about that blog post and how honored you are that you were interviewed by TeacherCast. Well, I mean, there are so many people that get to be interviewed by TeacherCast that I suppose if I hung around long enough, it had to come around to me. And, but it was a, a great honor to be interviewed uh, for this blog post that really talks about the role of puppets in education. So we kind of are able to let the cat out of the bag, so to speak, and uh, share that, that work we're doing, which is really excellent. Nice. I want to bring on our other co-host today, Mr. Chris Nessie from the House of EdTech Podcast. Chris, how you doing tonight? I am doing fantastic, Jeff Bradbury. It is a beautiful, hot Sunday here in New Jersey. It certainly is. Uh, so hot that uh, we had a great beach day yesterday. Did you have a chance to go to the Edu Beach? I was at the Edu Beach this morning, Ooh, Jeffrey. Nice. How are things going with the uh, House of EdTech Podcast? Things are smashing here at the house. Um, yeah, life is good. I'm in between the, uh, I'm on the bye week this week. Next episode comes out next Sunday. Nice. And, uh, there's a, uh, already a question here in the chat box. It's spelled a little wrong. It might be only typed with one hand. When are you having the puppet on the show? Show. When are you having the puppet on the show? We're currently in negotiations to have the great Waka make an appearance on the House of EdTech podcast. Excellent. You heard it right here. Coming to the House of EdTech podcast live on iTunes, Stitcher, and soon-to-be TeacherCast? Maybe. We'll maybe. see. Well, maybe we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bring on our guest. Tonight we're talking all about Star Wars, Star Wars in the Classroom. Tonight I want to bring on Tom Riddle. Tom, how are you tonight? Doing great. I appreciate you having me on, Jeff. Thank you so much for being on here. Now, you and I had connected on Twitter when I was uh, looking for Sithly like Twitter Twitter accounts, and there's so many great Star Wars Twitter accounts out there. And I've happened to find one that's called Star Wars in cl in the class or Star Wars in class. Talk to us a little bit about what Star Wars in the classroom dot com is. 
All right, so um, StarWarsInTheClassroom.com is really a, a kind of a clearinghouse for all things teaching and learning with Star Wars. And we, my partner Wes Dodgins and I started um, a similar uh, website a few years ago called Indy in the Classroom, centered around Indiana Jones. Oh, there you go. Uh, you can see there. Um, Andy in the Classroom, we launched in 2007 uh, when we were doing some work with Lucasfilm and promoting the educational uses of the young Indiana Jones uh, series that was coming out on DVD at that time. And so um, about two years ago, we decided we'd launch a, a Star Wars companion site as well. And both of us have extensive experience teaching and learning or, or teaching with um, both Indy and Star Wars. And so we thought we'd um, create a place where we could bring like-minded educators together to, to share ideas. Nice. And I certainly want to be diving into some of those great experiences that you guys had with uh, Lucas and Lucasfilm um, a little bit later on in the show when we start to talk about you know some of the background that goes on here. So stick around out there watching over at TeacherCast.tv. want to bring on another great guest tonight. I want to bring on Ian Dosher. Ian, how are you tonight? Just great. How are you? Doing well. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm the author of uh, William Shakespeare's Star Wars and uh, its sequels, William Shakespeare's The Empire Striketh Back and The Jedi Doth Return, which comes out in another month here. Nice. And uh, so you're a Star Wars fan. I am a Star Wars fan, and I'm a Shakespeare fan, as that might not surprise you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> of course, we're looking forward to figuring out how all that goes together, and what would you call episode three? Just wait for it, guys. We have a couple suggestions here. All right. Let's move on to Mr. Uh, Dan. Dan Zare, is it, Dan? Oh, sorry. I need to, I found in podcasting it helps to turn on your microphone. It's Yes, this is Dan Zare. Thank you for having me on. How are you doing, Dan? Do you have a light behind you or anything that we can get you a little bit brighter on? Uh, I'm actually in an unfinished basement. It's similar to the bunker at the middle of return of the jedi <laughs> i was gonna go with the sarlacc pit i wasn't sure about that yes. one there well fortunately no sarlacc we got rid of him last week <laughs> very very cool tell us a little bit about yourself dan absolutely well i am honored to be one of the rogue leaders uh in star wars in the classroom blue blue leader standing by and i write blogs for starwars.com on education and star wars and i also am a co-host of a podcast coffee with kenobi that takes a look at star wars through a critical lens so i'm very happy to be here and Talk about my two passions, education and Star Wars. Nice. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm so glad that you guys are here tonight on the Tech Educator Podcast. We are, of course, live here each and every Sunday night. We love it when we have a live audience over at TeacherCast.tv. If you are out there watching, you can check us out on Twitter at Tech Ed Show. And, of course, it's topics like this that come from your feedback, where you can, of course, reach out to us at feedback at techeducatorpodcast.com. And, of course, you can also leave us a voicemail at techeducatorpodcast.com slash voicemail. We, of course, love it when you sign up for our iTunes feed and our YouTube feed. And, Chris, I want to ask you a quick question here. We have something different on our iTunes feed and our YouTube feed. We have a new graphic, don't we? Yes, we do, Jeff. Um, I was very excited when you approached me about – oh, wait, no, hold on. I was really excited when I approached you about redesigning the artwork for you, and uh, now, now the uh, the network has some really sweet graphics that are visually appealing, look great on your iPad, your iPod, your Android device, and they're pretty slick. We uh, we, we love the work over there at uh, Nessie Graphic Designs. Let me see if I can pull this up here. Right there, if you check it out on, our, on the right side of the website, you'll see the brand new Tech Educator Podcast logo. And, uh, dude, I got to say online here, thank you. They look absolutely sweet. And it's actually, if you scroll down the website just a little here, you'll see some of the new logos that we're coming out with for uh, our shows. And Principal Cast uh, as well has a brand new logo. So very, very cool stuff coming out from the great Chris Nessie. But we're not here to talk about logos. We're here to discuss Star Wars. We're here live on TeacherCast.tv. If you have a great Star Wars moment, we want to hear about it. If you have some great stuff about the new movies coming out, we want to hear about it. So, guys, I'm going to just kind of open up the forum here and say, what do you think about all this great Star Wars news that we have coming out? Um, new video games, new Star Wars lands that they're talking about in the theater, in, in the theme parks. We have videotaping, it's still called videotaping. Filming is already underway for Episode 7, yet to be named. Um, what do you guys think about all the great Star Wars stuff that's going on these days? 
it's a great time to be a Star Wars fan, that's for sure. I um, think it, I think it, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Thomas. Yeah, go ahead, Dan. Well, you had your hand up. I want to acquiesce to that. Oh, no, 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 I was saying go ahead. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I think it's wonderful. And what better time to be a Star Wars fan than when you've got at least five new films coming out. It sounds like possibly six. The theme parks are going to be alive and vibrant. Disney purchasing Lucasfilm was probably the best thing to happen to Star Wars fans because now we have exposure worldwide constantly with a marketing machine that cares about families, it cares about education, and it's just a terrific thing for us. Star Wars is ubiquitous, and it's wonderful. Sam, how do you feel about the fact that uh, Disney chose the Ewoks over the Edu Puppets? Um, I I think you're definitely misquoting there because from what I understand, the Ewoks are off the table. I mean, they might be served at some point, but they're not actually acting in the new movies. Oh, thank goodness! Thank goodness. <laughs> um, so were, were they acting in the first appearance? You know, when, when I read about the things people write about the Ewoks, it's clear that the only people that liked the Ewoks were very small children, and they did not understand the Ewoks. <laughs> this is a whole different culture we've got here. Going Usually the podcast I'm on, people love the Ewoks. Uh, <laughs> I, I was going to say, man. <laughs> well, yeah, we, I, was, I was a very small child when, uh, when Return of the Jedi came out, so, you know. Usually well, it's the Jar Jar hate we get on uh, Coffee with Kenobi. Yeah. You know, what's funny is that um, that Jar Jar hate, along with the Ewoks, that um, I think uh, there were older folks that – older fans didn't like the Ewoks because they thought they were designed intentionally for kids. Um, I didn't see it so much as so. I thought it was more kind of that whole storyline of um, a very primitive culture being able to overthrow uh, a mechanized culture. But at the same time, you had that negative reaction from Jar Jar. Of course, I was an adult. I'm, I'm with you, Ian. I was uh, a young teenager when I saw Return of the Jedi and the Ewoks. And um, I know folks that were fans were older didn't like them. But now with the um, with Jar Jar hate, it was the same thing. It pretty much made for kids. Uh, and there's the older fans, including myself, that wasn't real happy with Jar Jar. But he, I, he's grown on me. Did I just say that? You did. <laughs> it's on tape. Oh, man. So let's go through some of the standard questions here. Uh, favorite episode out of the six so far? Oh, wow. I'll jump in on that one. Empire Strikes Back. How come? Uh, it was everything I wasn't expecting it to be when I went. Um, I was expecting to see more of uh, Luke Scott out of the Empire, and it was just the opposite. That movie had me off balance the entire time. And by the time it ended, and I was like, are you kidding me? It's ended? Um, I, I was somewhat stunned. But uh, I think that opening with a, with a battle scene, which was kind of a, a chance, because a lot of times you have a big battle at the end of the movie, um, that was immediately drawing me in as a kid. And then it was just nonstop action. Um, so I think it was just uh, a, a, a great film. And of no, course, I see that Star Wars in the classroom has one of the pilots from a snowspeeder as one of your rogues. Yeah, yeah, Dak, um, John Morton, and to hear to hear John talk about um, you know the filming uh, is pretty cool. John's a great storyteller and, and, a, and an awesome person, but he also um, I didn't know this until a few weeks ago. He played. Boba Fett in the scene where Han's being tortured and Boba Fett um, utters those famous words, he's no good to be dead. And so that was actually John in there because Jeremy, Bull Jeremy Bullock had to go off set to um, film in another, uh, another movie. And so John fit the suit. They were, they were friends, and he jumped in and stood in. So that was pretty cool to find out. So you're saying that the suit was the same, but they CGI'd the guy inside. <laughs> hey, before CGI. So let's just go down here. Chris, favorite movie out of the six? Uh, I actually – gee, my favorite movie. I'll have to go with the, uh, the first original. <laughs> the first <laughs> Episode A four. Hope. A New A Hope. New Hope. Excellent. Dan, for, ba favorite movie? Empire Strikes Back all the way. Nice. Uh, let's go down. Ian. Return of the Jedi. So uh it was the first one I saw in the movie theater, and I always loved the Jabba sequence. Nice. Sam? 
Uh, I think I'm going to have to go with Empire Strikes Back. Why? Because it had the snow monster, the Wampa. Mm. <laughs> Just too awesome. And the yeah, whole thing with great, 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 great grandfather. Talking about how bad the Tauntaun <laughs> smelled on the inside. I mean, there's some great <laughs> stuff in there. I, I, I will have to go with Jedi only because I like the scene with the musicians. But I'm saying that before they CGI'd Thank you. the dancers. Yeah, Max but, Rebo band, baby. But I, 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 nice. I love the guy, you know, I, I love the, 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 the keyboard. I, I, I had those guys as toys, and I just loved all that little stuff going on there. Um, all right, Wait, let's throw this Jeff, question. Quick, if, Jeff. Please. At some point, you, you are going to pull up for our viewers at home your, your, uh, your profile picture. With your, with your lightsaber, yes. <laughs> oh, we've got to see that. <laughs> I, I I have to majorly figure out where that is. Oh, and it's right prom now. picture, is it? it? Not my prom <laughs> picture, no. Oh, okay. Um, we I'll, did I'll, just have a Star Wars prom where I teach high school. It was pretty awesome. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll that thanks, would be Chris. Awesome. I'll I'll put that in the show notes or something like that. All right. Before we go on our first break, uh, let's go down alphabetical. Chris, R two D two or C three PO, and why? Uh, C-3PO because who can't resist a fantastic British accent? <laughs> no comments there. Dan. <laughs> oh, it's great. Usually I'm used to alphabetical order by last thing. This is a nice thing. It's going to be R2-D2. Who wouldn't want to have an R2 unit, a pal, companion, and he's a portable modem. He's a portable <laughs> Got it. Ian. <laughs> Ian. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, R2-D2 all the way. How come? Uh, because I found him to be way more, uh, sort of intelligent and, you know, noble than C-3PO. Okay. Okay. Uh, noble. Sam. Um, I'm going to have to say R2-D2 because all of C-3PO's essential functions can be done by my smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> Is it an Android or, <laughs> or an iOS device? <laughs> It's an iOS device, but it's, you know, translation and protocol, right? <laughs> C-3PO, there's an app for that. I love it. Good. <laughs> Tom, C-3PO or R2-D2? It just becomes oh, wow. C-3PO. How come? Oh, we, we... sorry. That was, that, was me inter- that was Ian interjecting, saying oh. that it's just become C-3PO. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, I, uh, I... <laughs> sorry. Nice. Um, I'll, 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 you know what? I let's do one more because this is kind of inspired by the chat room here. But uh, favorite scene: pod racing or chasing through the asteroids? Chris, I'm gonna have to go with the pod race because that just looked really cool. Okay, Dan, it's the asteroid field. It, I can't stand it in the episode one out since they put out the Blu-rays. They've added about eight more minutes to that thing. It was already long enough as it is. Well, they needed more filler for the uh, iPad game that just came out. That's right. <laughs> Ian. Asteroids, if only for the music, for the soundtrack behind it. Mm. Sam. What's pod racing? <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Asteroid Phil. And I'll have to agree with Ian. Amazing music. I'm going to go with, with, with the asteroids only because Carrie Fisher was in it. Um, there you we, go. And we have an arousing R2-D2 uh, shout out here from Mr. Uh, Craig Yen. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about why. Why are we talking about Star Wars in the classroom? What pedagogical reasons do we possibly have for this? And why would you want to combine Star Wars and Shakespeare? But first, here's some good reasons why you need to subscribe today to TeacherCast. To our nation, I wish, I wish there was a way to support TeacherCast that... Didn't cost me any money. I'm broke from buying school supplies. Subscribers must get more subscribers. Woo, you're scary. I think what he's tried to say is that if you go to teachercast.net forward slash YouTube and subscribe, we can begin broadcasting without commercials. We just need a thousand subscribers. Welcome back to the Tech Educator Podcast, where my guests are amazing creators of Star Wars content. And today we're going to be talking all about why Star Wars is pedagogically sound. Sam, have you ever heard about using Star Wars in your classroom? 
I haven't heard about using Star Wars, but as you can imagine, Jeff, there have been times where I've said, gosh, here's something I know a lot about, I care a lot about, I'm passionate about, how can I use it to teach? So that's what I'm excited to hear about with Star Wars in the classroom is obviously we've got a bunch of guests here who have some very deep involvement with Star Wars. And if they can bring that to their students, that's going to be inspiring for them. Now, Chris, I know you at school work with the kids that are in ISS a lot, right? Yes. And so those kids must be very, very full of Sith. And so you must be sitting there wondering, what can I do to inspire these kids and I'm sure every day they walk in and go, this is not the droid I'm looking for. Tom, tell us a little bit about why Star Wars in the classroom and how did all this get started? Um, well, I started using Star Wars pretty much out of the gate and when I began teaching uh, just about over 20 years ago. And really as a way to draw comparisons between um, history that we were studying and, and the films, just trying to make some pop culture relevant connections to the kids. And it was typically, um, I, I, I was getting the most use out of, um, at the beginning, we're drawing parallels between Yoda as a Taoist sage uh, and, say, any of the Jedi. So for the Force being um, uh, really symbolic of yin and yang, a light side and a dark side. And, and here you have this, uh, this little hermit of a man who's living in isolation, um, communing with the Force, which in, in the case of what we were talking about in the Tao, uh, and it was a way for kids to really understand Eastern philosophies, which most Western kids had very little understanding of. And of course, the more I began to draw those parallels, um, I began to also um, draw connections between the rise and fall of the Roman Empire, uh, with what we see with the Empire and Star Wars and also uh, comparisons with Nazi Germany. So there were so many parallels, and it's really because Lucas drew from so many historical uh, influences in the creation of the story. So that's kind of how it began uh, and kind of grew from there. Um, I, eventually I got to where I was um, teaching my, uh, my students about Joseph Campbell's Hero with a Thousand Faces, with his, his ideas in the monomyth, and that there's really um, one great story that all civilizations tell, and the heroes are very similar. And so in, te in teaching ancient history, we try to um, um, learn about these ancient civilizations through their stories, and uh, a way to do that was through studying mythology, their, their, their myths. And so we began to um, look at the mythological elements of Star Wars, so that's kind of how it began. So if I'm going to take the, you know, world of Star Wars and use it to support the understanding I'm trying to build in either literature or history, what are some of those lessons going to look like? I'm sure that the uh, Shakespeare's, uh, Shakespeare through Star Wars is, you know, one avenue for that, but like, what are the students doing? How does this really play into it? Is it just a, another set of metaphors that you use to illustrate lessons, or does it become an active part of the classroom culture? Well, I'd, I'd love to jump in on here on this one, to be honest. Go um, ahead. Yeah. Um, in fact, that's one of the ways that Thomas and I connected, but I was fortunate enough in February to write a blog for StarWars.com about how I incorporate Star Wars into the, the secondary learning environment, and at that point, we had just gotten done with King Arthur, so we naturally uh, transitioned into the hero's journey. And, I, and normally I would use, um, there's some excellent Superman uh, animated features that portray Superman as almost like a Beowulf. Uh, but I thought it would be fun to incorporate stars at that point. So we went through the hero's journey and we watched The New Hope and then we took very copious notes as we went through that journey. And I had them write papers analyzing that feature. Uh, I've also used, um, Ian and I, uh, had some great times together because he Skyped into my classrooms and with my freshmen after we used Romeo and Juliet, then we looked at the Empire Strike is Back and he talked about the parallels there. So we took how Shakespeare can translate into modern languages and modern cultures and um, Star Wars in the classroom itself, and I'm sure Thomas is going to speak on this, uh, the rogues have their lessons outlined out there, all different kinds of disciplines for you to look at and to peruse that bring stars into the classroom in a bunch of different ways. It's just incredible the amount of things there. So it's just so much more than metaphor. Uh, star Wars is literature, and as a, as a teacher of literature and writing, uh, it's just boundless the things you can get from there, and, and the students love it. So what, what better thing than to pull students in with popular culture? 
Yeah, and and also one of the lessons that we have uh, posted there um, from one of our uh, one of our rogues, one of our fellow teachers, uh, John Darian, is Star Wars ecology and protein synthesis. And so it's a whole um, unit teaching about protein synthesis through examining the flora and fauna of Naboo. And so how how do these how would these fictional characters um, what kind of world would they have to have to actually exist? And so learning uh, about actual protein synthesis uh, and ecology through that. So there's a, a lot of ways to, um, to use it. So are you saying that if you take the, the world of Naboo, where you have the Gungans and you have the Queen Amidala people, and the lesson there is that they're actually symbolic and they ha or symbiotic and they have to kind of coexist, are you saying that that's a lesson that people can learn today in our real world? Greg, is this on? Thomas, are you there? <laughs> I think Thomas I think got this. Lost, I think we lost Tom momentarily. Uh, <laughs> that would be it. That would be the dramatic pause. That would be an epic fail. He and I have talked about this lesson before. It's it's just incorporating um, the science of, of course, Star Wars is a fictional universe, but there are certain applications and protocols that, that are applicable here that you can imply uh, it's just a, another method of analysis, and, and he'll probably speak to it much better because I'm more of a literature guy. Because I know we have an author uh, that wrote about Star Wars and history and takes all the different uh, epic moments and battles from Star Wars and incorporates how Lucas and others were inspired by some of these battles, and there's a definite compare-contrast situation there as well. Well, let's talk about some of these ways here. It, it, could you give us some resources, or you know, we can, of course, put them on the show notes, but for a teacher that's looking to get into using Star Wars, are there lesson plans that you guys have created or that are out there for using? Are these lessons uh, you know, standard-aligned? What, mm -hmm. what, what generally happens when a teacher goes up to their principal and says, I want to use the Force in my classroom? Well, that's actually why Thomas created the Rogues, because uh, in one of the things on the Rogues homepage is it talks about a lot of your fellow teachers will probably roll their eyes or laugh at you if you mention the word Star Wars and education in the same breath. But on the Rogues homepage, there are a number of lesson plans. Uh, I know that mine align with the Common Core standards, which we're following in Illinois. They're very critical thinking based, very heavy on analysis and writing. Um, yeah. And I know that uh, some of the history ones have that as well. And what are some of the lesson plans that, I mean, are these mostly the history things? Or can I, as a music teacher, get into all this? Or what kind of resources are out there? You've got, you've got music. You've got science. Uh, we have someone who does uh, foods. We have just about every discipline there is. Thomas, they had asked how, what other disciplines are there besides history and English. Oh, yeah. Um, can you guys hear me? I just had... An asteroid hit you. Should, should I go back and ask that question again? I'm not sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Hey, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, ask that question again. I'm sorry. I, I don't think I want to go back and relive that. <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh, other, any other lessons besides um, science and history? Mm -hmm. This is why I leave the pictures of my babies up on the screen when I so whenever I majorly bomb here. Yeah, besides besides English, besides history, and he asked as a as a music teacher, what is there for music educators as well? Oh yeah, um, there actually is some things uh, that we're working on with uh, John Williams' uh, influences from uh, with opera uh, and the and the score. Um, also, um, some of the uh, when when Williams was writing the the score for. Star Wars. It essentially he talks about it being like a um, uh, writing the the score for a cartoon, and so we have some things that we're working on right now that haven't been published on the website, but those are coming f for music. It's interesting. I uh, I went to college with a guy who wrote a paper when we were in the same class together about uh, the use of light motif, which is uh, something that Wagner used in writing the Ring Cycle uh, in. John Williams' scores for Star Wars and about how each character, you know, not not every character, but a lot of the main characters have sort of their own themes and that sort of thing uh, that then, you know, repeat every time you see these people again, or there's sort of a, a theme for the rebellion, a theme for the force, all these different things. And so 
uh, I think there's actually a lot you could do there in terms of uh, music education. Well, yeah, sure. there is, and, and really part of that has to do with how music is used to tell a story. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about those light motifs, um, that's one thing that we often talk about uh, in the classroom. It's like the um, uh, the victory parade at the end of the Phantom Menace. Um, that music, if you slow it down and drop it several octaves, um, it's actually a, a play on, it's kind of a, a precursor to the Emperor's theme. And so the victory is, is it really the, the victory of the good guys, or is this really Palpatine's victory? Because he had everything really in place that he wants to have. Um, it's just like Anakin's theme uh, in Episode 1-2, and the, very, the, the, the last few notes of that are uh, it's very light and lilting, but the last few notes of it um, are the Imperial March. Um, so, yeah, so there's things like that that we'll be talking about in those lessons. Should be of the summer. Tom, you and just gave me an actual reason to go back and watch episode one now. <laughs> yeah, there's there. <laughs> what, one, uh, one reason. Uh... <laughs> well, the, the big thing for me was Shakespeare, and, and it was such a blessing when Ian uh, came into the Star Wars universe with William Shakespeare Star Wars. Is my very first lesson I ever taught as a student teacher, I paralleled Anakin Skywalker's fall to Hamlet, and the idea, the idea of Shakespeare's tragic hero and how beautifully Anakin Skywalker from Revenge of the Sith particularly fits that mold. So not, not only the metaphors, but the Shakespearean language, King Arthur, just star, as I said, Star Wars is literature, so there's just so much you can use in so many disciplines that it can incorporate Star Wars into that. Well, talk to us a little bit about the Shakespeare and how does it work? What can we do? Is this, is this a, something that we in our classroom can take out and read and act out? Or w what is the concept here behind Star Wars and Shakespeare and where can we go to get more information about it? So William Shakespeare's Star Wars is essentially, uh, you know, the Star Wars A New Hope told as though it were a play written by Shakespeare. So you've got all the scenes, you've got, uh, you know, all, all the action, everything that you know from the movie is there, except it's in five acts and it's all an iambic pentameter and, uh, you know, you're seeing some Elizabethan vocabulary, things like that. The idea behind it, I, I mean, first and foremost, the idea was, hey, let's write something that people are going to smile at and have a good time with. Um, secondarily, though, and not far behind, is this is hopefully something that can be used in the classroom because it can introduce kids to Shakespeare in a non-threatening way, uh, right? I put it within the context of Star Wars, which is a story that they're either familiar with already or they can become familiar with by watching the movie quickly, you know. And then they're getting a lot of iambic pentameter. They're getting some uh, vocabulary. They're getting some direct references to Shakespeare. Uh, but it's all within this safe Star Wars context, so that then hopefully when they move on to real Shakespeare, uh, it's not maybe as threatening. Because uh, I think there is this sort of cultural uh, fear around studying Shakespeare. I think students go into it often assuming that they just won't be able to understand it. Like they, they already just think, okay, there's no way I'm going to get this. Uh, and so they're already turned off to it. So uh, right. it starts... Star Wars makes Shakespeare more accessible. So when you are uh, doing sh Star Wars and Shakespeare, if I was playing the role of Jar Jar, would I have to still wear tights? Uh, it's possible, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Chris, you had a question. Yeah, guys, with uh, everything that you're doing, just for the listeners and the viewers, is it necessary to show the films in their entirety, or do you recommend bringing in clips of the film t for maybe kids who haven't seen the films yet? What I did when we had, were going to have Ian in is I showed basically from the end of the planet, uh, the Battle of Hoth and the Empire Strikes Back to Han and Leia's first kiss because there's an excellent sequence in the Empire Strikes Back um, that parallels Romeo and Juliet's courtship early on in Acts 1 and 2 of Romeo and Juliet. So I showed them those clips and then I uh, showed them the scenes from Ian's book and then the next day they acted them out for Ian and then we talked about the Amic Pentameter and the uh, the parallels between the two and the inspiration and light and dark and all those kind of things and the banter between the two. And it, it worked out beautifully. It, Ian is 100% correct as far as that goes because it does show these students that – because when you say Shakespeare to a high school freshman, 90% of the time they glaze over like, I don't know what this is, and they just completely give up. So when you show them something as wonderful as Star Wars can be retold as Shakespeare, you have buy-in. And as an educator, it's invaluable. Yeah, that, that buy-in piece is, is huge, and really it's something to um, – anything that you can do to hook and engage them is makes it worthwhile.
Which actually, I mean, to make, surprises me then that, that, you know, I mean, I understand certainly the, the sort of warning on the Rogue's homepage of, you know, you might be laughed at. On the other hand, I can't think of a better way to engage kids than to, you know, say, hey, guess what? We're going to be, yeah, we're going to be studying science or math or English or whatever it is. But guess what? We're going to do it in the context of Star Wars. How fun. Oh, it's I don't amazing. Think a... Go ahead. I'm sorry, Chris. I was going to say, I, was, I don't think there's a problem with that at all. I mean, you, you have a lot of websites out there that encourage the use of film in education, and there's lesson plans. So why aren't there more people, you know, engaging their students in any way possible, whether it's Star Wars or, you know, pick another great film franchise mm -hmm. to engage students in learning? Absolutely, problem. and we just happen – yeah, and, and we just happen to be using Star Wars in this context. You know, and what was, uh, what's been great, Chris, is that um, I think that there were a lot of us that were doing this kind of in isolation. And when we, um, when we put out the call to, to identify other teachers who might be teaching like, you know, like we were with Star Wars uh, and created this group called The Rogues, um, it's been fantastic because we've, you know, we've heard from teachers all over the world. Um, and so... This is a chance for us to create kind of a, a PLN, a professional learning network for, um, for teachers who want to use pop culture and, and teach real rigorous lessons. Yeah, that's an important thing. I'm glad you mentioned that because the rigor is still very much there. Some people may think, oh, Star Wars, they're going to watch a movie and the teacher's going to sit in the back and grade or check their Facebook account. Not, not at all. Not all the standards are there. As I said, I could put everything from my lesson plans with Star Wars into the Common Core quite easily and and persuade anyone. In fact, one of the uh, deans of our school is a technology director, and she has been glowing about uh, seeing these students come to life using William Shakespeare, Star Wars, and incorporating Star Wars in the curriculum in many ways. So it's it's been very successful for me. Yeah, and, and okay. Adam Watson, who's – I'm sorry, Ian. I was just going to uh, give a shout-out to Adam. His lesson plans for Ian's book – um, our Common wow. Core uh, ready and, and aligned, and I mean, there it's some great, great material, so you can check those out. Ian, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to make the joke to Dan that I hope that means the next time we get to do it in person. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll fly you out. No problem. We're talking here, of course, about the website StarWarsInTheClassroom.com, a great resource for your classroom, and certainly check it out. Before we get off this topic, I, I wanted to ask about the original website, which was Indiana Jones. Now, you had said earlier that you actually had a chance to work with Lucas. How did you get into that? What was that like, and, and did, you meet, did you meet George? Well, um, in 2007... Um, when when I found out that they were doing the uh, that they were going to create the DVDs for the Young Indie series, uh, I wrote a letter to Howard Rothman and expressed to him my interest um, in that series and, and my belief that it was a great educational tool. I've been teaching with it for a long time, sent some sample lesson plans, and then to my surprise, uh, heard back from them within a few weeks. Um, they wanted to hear a teacher's uh, input on you know who'd been using their material. And so that led uh, to a great relationship working with uh, some great people with Lucasfilm. Um, fast forward a few years, it gave us an opportunity to actually go to Skywalker Ranch. I uh, had no idea that we'd, we'd uh, bump into George there, but we did. And that was, uh, that was quite exciting for my family and I. So what was it like pulling up to the, uh, the gates there? And is it, Yoda is the one greeting you or what, what does he have in front? There's a giant rancor there, man. Are you kidding? You know, they oh my God. <laughs> got to stay away, Yoda. Yeah, there's actually the gates are nondescript. Um, when you drive by, uh, and, it, and it's Lucas Valley Road, which is a different Lucas family altogether, coincidentally, um, the, the, the gates don't really scream Star Wars or anything. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful ranch, and um, you can't really tell that there's anything related to, to Star Wars at all until you get inside the house and you see some um, see some artifacts and things on display. That's that's a pretty cool story there. Pretty pretty yeah, neat. Yeah, appreciate it. We're gonna take a little bit of a break here, and when we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit about podcasting. We've got some great Star Wars podcasters here. There's a lot of great resources on this Star Wars podcast that we're gonna talk to after a word from these messages from our pal Grog the Zombie. Good afternoon, Grog here with best friend Sheep. <laughs> Hello. We came to visit our friend Harold. Um, Harold, 
All right. Uh, well, what you got going on here? All right. You f flip the classroom? Um, Harold? This is bad. All right. All right. Y yes, Harold, I know a flipped classroom is a pretty, you know, pretty popular topic now in, in schools, but, um, I don't think you got the right idea. No, um, Harold, I believe what you may need to do is check out TeacherCast. TeacherCast may be able to help you figure out the right way to flip a classroom. You're welcome, Harold. Yeah, check out TeacherCast, Harold, um, and try to put that classroom back the way it was, okay? You get in trouble, man. Bye. All right, we're back live talking all about Star Wars and some of the great resources out there for Star Wars in your classroom. Of course, we're here live every single Sunday at 7 o'clock Eastern on TeacherCast.tv. And uh, tonight we're going to switch a little bit of gears, talk about podcasting. Now, uh, you guys have been uh, doing some Star Wars podcasting. Tell us a little bit about some of the great Star Wars podcasts that are out there for teachers. Well, really, I think... Uh um, Dan has an amazing podcast, uh, Coffee with Kenobi, and he and I actually met through uh, me finding his, uh, reading his blog on the official site, and then um, diving into his podcast. So, Dan, tell us about what you do. Oh, I'm happy to do it. Well, we just celebrated our one-year anniversary with Steve Sansweet on our show, so that was pretty remarkable. And for those who don't know, he's the Guinness Book of World Records holder for the largest Star Wars collection, has a ranch in Petaluma, California, Rancho Obi Wan. So that was great. But for us, uh, the Star Wars podcast, Coffee with Kenobi, is really about giving a voice to people. And one of the things I love about teaching literature is critical thinking and analysis. And one of the things I did my thesis on was how to incorporate students into the discussion. And I got tired of being myself and maybe two or three students who would actually only read the book and everyone else would just kind of zone out. And I found that to be not really learning. So we started incorporating these different ways of getting people to discuss, and as this was going on, I thought, how great would this be to incorporate Star Wars into this? Uh, so we took that idea, that concept, and my, my good friend Corey Club is my co-host. He's a graphic designer, so he designed the logo, came up with the name Coffee with Kenobi. And what we do each week is we throw out some sort of a question, usually something more about uh, this, the, the methodology of rumors of the rise, fall, and redemption of Darth Vader, something that... Uh, you can really sink your teeth into that represents multi-dimensional thinking. Uh, and then we allow uh, everyone two weeks to kind of email us with, or MP3 their thoughts and ideas and concepts, and then we get back and we discuss it, just like we would uh, in a classroom setting, a classroom environment. We have different guests on. Ian's been on before. I'm going to have Thomas and Wes on in the future, uh, hopefully in a much bigger capacity. Spoiler. Um, so there are a lot of exciting things going on with that website, and, and besides Coffee with Kenobi, um, we do have bloggers that talk about these concepts as well, but Full of Sith is an excellent one to talk about Star Wars, as is the Force cast, the Cantina cast. There are a lot of amazing Star Wars podcasts out there. In fact, there are a lot of Star Wars podcasts out there. So if I'm a teacher and I'm looking to get my students to be working with Star Wars or whether it's through history or English, could I give, could I use these Star Wars podcasts as kind of a, a mentor text to say, you know, here's a good, you know, here's a good source that you can look at for understanding things through Star Wars or are they mainly just Star Wars, you know, podcasts explicitly about what's going on right now in the world of Star Wars? Well, for, our, for Coffee with Kenobi, we probably only spend 10 minutes talking about the recent news. Uh, the nuts and bolts of our uh, commentary is the discussion aspect of a particular theme or idea or a concept, and we tailor them to the guests we have as well as to the concept. So if I were working with another educator, we would absolutely tailor our conversation to them. We could incorporate the students into that production. They could send in their questions, MP3s, things of that nature. They could interact with the show. Uh, we could get different threads and things going on to bring that to life. And I think that would be a fantastic thing. And like I said, the nice thing about the the way that we do things is that we throw these questions out there and through our website or our Facebook or Twitter feeds, that's where the discussion happens. So you can get your students j jumping into technology and interacting with one another live with the podcast, or they could take that recording and they could, of course, through the power of technology, they could pause. They don't want to hear me yodel on and on forever and ever, so they can pause me whenever they need to, 
and say, well, what do you think about that concept? It's, it's tailor-made for discussion at, at every level. Now, today's students have a lot more technology at their fingertips than we had even four or five years ago. Do you think, as a podcaster yourself, that podcasting is a medium that teachers should be exploring to help students create digital texts and create content? I, I think it's a resource out there that uh, it's as, as valuable as the invention of fire because you've got this incredible idea of interacting with people across the globe. Just two weeks ago, I had a conversation with a guy from Australia at Dallas to the IndyCast and Mark Newbold at Jedi News UK in London. Just at the same time, interacting, exchanging ideas about different things. You can do that. Now, I know you can do that with Skype or with the Google Hangouts here, but with the podcasting, it's, it's a matter of recording it and preserving it. A lot of tech-savvy people will incorporate a podcast into a website or a blog so that, again, facilitates more conversation. You can build promos out of it. There are just so many things you can do with podcasting. It's, it's an incredible resource that I'm looking forward to incorporating next year. In fact, I just got approval to have Chromebooks for all of my students, one-to-one -one Chromebooks, so we're going to do a lot of podcasting. Now, Chris, you're going to be starting a new podcast soon on your network. You're, you talked to me about doing something called The House of Jar Jar. Could you tell us a little bit about this concept? <laughs> uh, the House of Jar Jar is very much... Uh, in developmental hell, <laughs> which is where Jar Jar should be. <laughs> um, so don't miss words. Out, Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> yeah. If I could toss out a question to to you guys, um, being interested in podcasting, I am a new podcaster myself um, with the House of EdTech. <laughs> um, what was your inspiration, or what inspired you to get into podcasting? What are your favorite podcasts? What what what, what got you sure. into it? Uh, the big thing for podcasting for me is um, I actually was the Tony Kornheiser show out of Washington, D.C. He's on Pardon the Interruption, and I discovered he had a podcast, and someone explained to me, well, this is a radio program, but you can listen to it whenever you want. You can pause it. You can take it with you. Um, so I just started teaching, and I had a, about a 45-minute commute, and just on a whim, I thought, I wonder if there are any Star Wars podcasts. So I clicked it up, and I found the Force cast. I'm also a big Disney guy, so Inside the Magic by Ricky Bergranti is basically – textbook perfect on how to run a podcast with the music and Ed Dolls to the IndyCast. All these guys take these ideas and concepts and they splice in music. They, they interact with different fans and listeners through emails and MP3s and they're all, they're all the standards of excellence as far as I'm concerned. But it, the big thing, you, you asked me what inspired me to get into podcasting. I think it's so important with all these uh, incredible intelligent people out there uh, everybody has a voice. Everybody has something that they are passionate about that they want to share with everyone. They don't. Just, they want their voice to be heard. And I knew how I felt when I would interact with different shows. I didn't always get the feedback I was looking for or any feedback at all. And people are very busy. They've got a lot of commitments and families and things like that. But I thought, wouldn't it be great to have a podcast where we make sure we get a lot of people on our staff, so to speak, and make sure to interact with everyone. Uh, and so that's the driving force for me to give that voice to everybody. For people who are starting to get into podcasting, are there any recommendations as far as equipment or what, what exactly do you use to create your podcasts? Sure. Uh, well, for me, we edit just through GarageBand with Apple. It's a very easy program to use. A lot of people like using Audacity. That works very well, too. The microphone I use is actually just a karaoke mic from Target. It cost me 40 bucks. It came with the headphones. It's got a beautiful crystal clear sound. Uh, and then we just record uh, through Skype, through a, through a free app on Skype that records. So it's, it's really quite easy. I mean, I, you do have to get a podcasting server for your RSS feed. We use Libsyn for that. Mm -hmm. now, Sam, this actually is the feedback you're looking for, Jeff. <laughs> Sam, you're starting a new podcast called Coffee with Waka. Um, could you talk to us a little bit about some of the equipment that you currently have? I noticed that you have a new background and you've got your headphones on and you've got that mic. Right. right no right, Java with Jar Jar? That's a prime thing. <laughs> wow, yeah, yeah. We should have gone Java with Jar Jar, but in our... Um, it was coming next break. Our, our test results, <laughs> the market test that we ran showed that while people were willing to look at Jar Jar, no one was willing to listen to him. You do know, have you heard of uh, Paul McDonald's book, The Star Wars Heresies? He's in, he incorporates the idea of Jar Jar to, to, similar to the Frog Prince. And that idea of the comic relief and the very heavy things. When you think about the Phantom Menace, you've got um, a planet being taken over. You've got people being completely decimated because they, uh, because really of of xenophobia, if you will. And there's just a lot of powerful things there. And Jar Jar brings in that 
that levity that is that is sometimes so much needed. And and it may surprise some of you to know, maybe not, but my kids and students who grew up with the Phantom Menace, they think Jar Jar is amazing. I just want to know how he came from one of the most hated creatures to like the next movie, episode two. He's like he's not he's a, he's a senator, right? He is a senator, and so, he's responsible for the downfall of the republic. He holds oh the chance for the power. Well, naturally, he is. <laughs> That's just a prime example and, and, of our own government whoops. where everybody and, can rise up. And yet, his tongue is still affected by being uh, in the middle of the pod racing uh, little lightsaber show thing. There, it's amazing <laughs> what goes on with all of that stuff. Um, are there? Is there something out there that you can recommend to teachers? I mean, we get the question all the time of what equipment to use. And you said, you know, go out and just 40 bucks for a microphone. What advice do you have for the teacher out there that's looking to just create? Or could you recommend maybe just some lessons that we could use when we're starting to create podcasts? Sure. Well, well anybody can email me. When I first started podcasting, I had one that Ed from the IndieCast used for his students. He's a, he's a theater teacher as well, and he has a unit where they have to create – their own podcast, um, and he teaches them to splice some music. I would happily forward that on to anyone. I'll, I'll put on the Star Wars in the Classroom website as well. The biggest thing for me was I, I researched like crazy. There are a lot of podcasting tutorials out there. The, the biggest thing about podcasting is there are so many. You have to find your particular niche. What makes you stand out? What are you looking at that other people are looking at differently? That's That's the most important thing. What are people looking at? When it comes to Star Wars yeah. or podcasting? Both. Uh, well, I mean, there are a lot of podcasts that just look at news. or There's one called Star Wars in Character that just looks at obscure characters in the background. It talks about them for an outreach time. So we wanted to find something that gave sort of a unique pedagogical approach to it that uses more an analysis base. That we, didn't, we found there wasn't much like that on a consistent basis. There's a, uh, a, a request here in the, in the chat room, Sam. They'd like to see a video podcast called Waltzing with Waka. Is, that, is this a possibility? <laughs> Uh, no. That's not really a waltz. <laughs> no. I I don't have any feet. <laughs> and I thought his jokes were bad on the other side. Okay. <laughs> we're going to take one last break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about a little bit of some of the great stuff that's happening this summertime. Sam... You have some amazing things going on in a few weeks. I want to have you get take a chance to explain them. But first, this message from the great former president of our country, Mr. George W. Bush. Uh, hello, uh, everybody. This is uh, Jay Leno hello, on The Tonight, Tonight Show uh, here with former president George W. Bush. Say hello, former president Bush. Hello, America. <laughs> All right. Um, we have a special guest here joining us uh, before we leave the show tonight. His name is uh, Grog the Zombie. Grog, will you come on out here for a second, all right, Grog? Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Mr. President. Grog, uh, super happy to be here. Whoa. You're a pretty big fella there, Grog. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you, former Mr. President, sir. All right, uh, Grog, uh, there was something special you wanted to do here tonight? Uh, yes. Our word of the week is infer. Infer means to read between the lines or to take a guess by looking at clues. We would like for you and former President Bush to infer the best teaching resource on the internet just by clues me and my best friend Sheep give you. Oh, Sheep, he sounds like a great fella. <laughs> oh, well, all right then, Grog. Uh, let's, let's do this. Let's see if we can imply or infer uh, what the best teaching resource is. Sheep, come on out. You have a guess yet? Can you infer what the best resource on the internet is for teachers? Mm, no, not yet. You, Mr. President? <laughs> I like it when the sheep goes, boing. <laughs> um, okay, me try to give you more clues. Hold on. Take a look at Grog's cell phone. Take a look at Sheep's iPad. Any guesses now? Hmm. Oh, I get it. It's TeacherCast. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Thank you. Good job inferring. Inferring means to read between the lines or look at clues. Yes, TeacherCast is also available on the Internet for teachers as well. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Leno. Uh, before you go, you think you can get that sheep buddy of yours to jump over that iPad again? Sheep? Feel like jumping? Yeah. <laughs> all right, welcome back to the Tech Educator Podcast. Tonight we're talking all about pop culture, Star Wars, some of the great stuff. You just happened to see a, an amazing commercial that our good friend Jedi Padmaster Toby Price put together for us using an app called Puppet Pals. And uh, Sam, that brings me to you. Puppets seems to be your thing, and you're going to be teaching people how to use puppets coming up soon at ISTE. Could you give us a little bit of a, a hint at what you're going to be doing this year at ISTE 2014? You bet. Um, pup, we're going to be talking about puppets in education at a puppets and podcasting workshop at ISTE. We're going to have a couple hours together. We're going to talk about technique and how to essentially create full green screen, high production value videos using nothing more than an iPad or your desktop computer. Now, there is a little bit of a charge for this workshop. I don't want to get you know people on the right. There is a little bit of a charge. But, Sam, tell them what they can actually get for that charge. First of all, they get three hours with us. Right. And if you pay double, you can leave early. That's, that's, that's true. That is true. But seriously, um, we are going to be bringing some stuff on how to make puppets, right? So they're actually going to be able to, to take something with them. My Yes, my goal is that we are able to create some kind of a puppet during that time. It may not be your most beautiful puppet, but it might be your first puppet, and it's good to get that one out of the way so you can hide it and forget about it later. Now, much like Jar Jar, is this a puppet that you only want to watch once, or is this something that we can do over and over again? We can do this over and over again. I mean, my goal is that even if all you do is show up with the tote bag that you got free in the conference hall, we can turn that into a puppet. So we shouldn't be like taking, planning to take off our socks? You know, socks are always a good kind of last defense against puppetlessness. While but we don't want to go there too early. While we're doing this workshop, can we talk about Star Wars? Of course. We can talk about just about anything. Now, the question, of course, is what do I bring with me? And we're going to be doing this in a BYOD-type lab, but we're also going to have some software on, on PCs. What should people actually expect technology-wise? Well, we're going to have Camtasia to use as our video editing software. Um, it's going to be in a Windows lab that have webcams on the computers. So even if you didn't show up with any technology, you'll still be able to do stuff. But if I were you, I would show up with a tablet computer and a puppet. Which and is if more you don't important. have a tablet computer, you can not show up with that. But if you have a puppet, bring the puppet. Nice. We, of course, hope that we see – what was that? BYOP. BYOP. And of P. course, we hope that we can see you at ISTE. And if you're not going to be there, Sam, did you know that there's a way for people to see us at ISTE? That's crazy. Every day. I, I, I can officially make this announcement now. Can we get a drum roll, Nessie? Nessie? <laughs> that actually sounded more like a Chewbacca. That, that was, was a Chewie. That was a <laughs> We've gone 59 minutes without a Chewie reference, so there you go. Right. If you are not able to make it to Atlanta this year, we are actually going to be broadcasting live. Yes, the official broadcasters of ISTE 2014 in Hotlanta. We are going to be broadcasting live on TeacherCast.tv every single day of the conference, um, 9 o'clock till noon Eastern, uh, right on TeacherCast.tv. Please make sure that you're uh, subscribed to our Twitter feed over at TeacherCast, and also please subscribe to their Twitter feed, ISTE connects we have some amazing guests for you first of all we're going to be talking to waka patui aren't we we really are we're going to be talking all the time there and we have some other great guests we are actually going to be doing a one-to-one -one interview with the cyberary man jerry blumengarten we're going to be doing a one-to-one -one interview with the cool cat teacher vicky davis uh we've got some other great stuff we're going to be talking to some q rock stars we're going to be talking to some google uh some google educators we've got uh great educators out there like aaron klein coming on shelly terrell uh, who am I missing? We, we've got the Edge of You girls. We've got a, a ton of content to come out. Please check us out. Uh, more information of that is going to, of course, be on TeacherCast. So if you're there watching us live on TeacherCast.tv, sign up for our newsletter. Subscribe to us on Twitter. We have some great stuff. 
And uh, that is what's going to be happening in the next couple of weeks. Next week, Sam and Chris, I believe we're going to be talking all about ISTE right here live. Many of you guys remember last year. Last Yeah, last year we had uh, Adam Bellow on and we did an amazing show. Um, Adam last year was the uh, ISTE keynoter and did an amazing job at it, by the way. And I'm not just saying that because that boy put me in the video. But uh, <laughs> next week we're going to be talking all about ISTE. So please. Call your friends. Make sure that they know next week at 7 o'clock Eastern, we are talking ISTE live on the Tech Educator Podcast. Guys, I want to say thank you. We just blew by this last hour. There's so much Star Wars. I would love to bring you guys back on as we have the movies come closer, as we have more Star Wars information to go. Um, Tom, where do you see the future here of, of all of this stuff? I mean, as the movies come on, are you guys going to be making more content for us based on episode seven eight nine and of course all those spoiler movies that are coming in the middle oh absolutely and we're already putting together some ideas for star wars rebels um based on some early information that's that's out there so yeah i mean it's it's a great time um to be teaching uh with star wars and um, i think that we'll only continue to grow our network where can we find out more information about the great stuff you do tom um, you can go to www.starwarsintheclassroom.com. Certainly check that out. A great resource. Hey, the Rogues, is that a group that a puppet can join? <laughs> you know, uh, wow. He, we we may can make him a member of the Spec Ops team. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> just, just for the record. Uh, there are a lot of puppets in the Star Wars universe, just to be clear. Yes, yes, we, there are. They should. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that he'd be following a long line of, uh, you know, um, uh, talented puppets. There you go. J just for the record, he told me to ask you that live, so you had to answer <laughs> yes. Teachers uh, can think on their feet, so we're ready for that. Dan talk, to, Dan, talk to us a little bit about where we can find you and your great podcast. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, well, you can find us at, at Coffee with Kenobi at Twitter. It's WTH, actually, because Twitter wouldn't allow me to put WITH. You can find us on coffeewithkenobi.com. We're on iTunes. We're on Stitcher. Uh, we're all over the place podcasting-wise. And you can find me personally at, at Mr. Zare, M-R-Z-E-H-R on Twitter. Nice. And Ian, tell us a little bit about where we can find the great stuff that you're doing. Sure. So uh, my website is iandesher.com, I-N-D-O-E-S-C-H-E-R.com. But it's easier probably to uh, go over to Amazon or Barnes & Noble or your local bookstore and uh, look for William Shakespeare's Star Wars. Nice. And certainly check that out. We will make sure, Chris, that when we uh, pop up the new TeacherCast website that we will have that in our TeacherCast Amazon store. Good stuff. What? A new TeacherCast website? Did, did, did you not know that we're doing a new TeacherCast website? Awesome. For those of you who are looking for a sneak peek, for those of you who are looking for the smallest of options – there it is. So Okay, take it away. There, there it you go. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> but uh, definitely one of the nice things about ISTE is that we're going to be unveiling the brand new TeacherCast website. Ready, 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 ready? There it is. Sam. Beautiful. Yes. You're going to ISTE. I'm going to ISTE. Until then, where can we get a hold of you and that great new website that you're trying to build that's going to be coming out tomorrow on a blog post at ISTE Connects? <laughs> All of my amazing can be found at www.mypaperlessclassroom.com. And tomorrow morning, edupuppets.com will go live for good or for not. That's pretty much what it'll probably look like, that with a few changes, yeah. Well, we certainly hope not. Um, Chris, talk to us a little bit about what's happening next weekend on the House of EdTech. I know you guys, you, you do your shows every other week. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a great interview scheduled with Teresa Steger, who is a fantastic principal and a member of the TeacherCast Broadcasting Network's Principal Cast podcast. So I'm looking forward to talking to Teresa in next week's episode. And everybody who's looking for that can find House of Ed Tech in iTunes, on Stitcher, and my website, mr.chrisnessy.com. Excellent. There's, of course, a lot of great things going on here in the TeacherCast world. Please, uh, if you're sitting there on TeacherCast.tv, sign up for our mailing list. We are looking to grow that and uh, get that more active. I know that's one of those things that uh, – one of those summer goals of ours is to become a little bit more active on our newsletter. There's, of course, several ways that you can contact the show and be a part of our TeacherCast family. You can reach out on Twitter at TeacherCast. Leave us a voicemail at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail, and we love it when you leave us reviews 
on teachercast.net slash iTunes and teachercast.net slash YouTube. I think we just hit 1,050 uh, YouTube subscribers. That is awesome. That number is growing exponentially every single day. Check us out. Well, for everybody here in the galactic empire that is the TeacherCast Nation, thank you so much for joining us tonight on TeacherCast.tv. Again, next week we're going to be live talking all about ISTE 2014, what to expect, what to dress, and how do I take part in that puppet-making workshop. For everybody here on the panel, my name is Jeff Bradbury. Please hug a baby tonight and say thank you to the Edu Triplets out there on their brand new website, edutriplets.com. Until next time, this is Jeff signing off for Tech Educator Podcast.